Hi, what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at a program called Paint.net version 3.10. It's a great little program. It's similar to something like MS Paint, which is included with most versions of Windows. And um, it's a lot more powerful is the thing. So if you do like using MS Paint or doing any drawing with software stuff and want something free that's pretty good, I would say this is a pretty good one. And um, it's fairly easy to use. Now what I did here to start is I press this button here that I have my arrow over to uh, make a new document and I press OK here. You can change your settings if you like, but we'll just stick with the defaults for now. Now what we often want to do when we're starting off with paint.net, starting off a new picture, is we often want to add a new layer. And I'll show you why. So I'm not going to add the layer right now. I'll show you why it is desirable to add a layer. So we have our line here. Let's put a little dip in it and continue it over here. And um, if we were to use the eraser, for example, if we didn't like this part here and wanted to get rid of it to use the eraser, which is right beside the paintbrush right here, we could erase that. But unfortunately, what we're getting is something strange. We're getting this checkerboard pattern appearing right here, which is a little bit odd. Now, what happened there is that we erased not only the black line that I had drawn through here, but we're also erasing the white in the background here. And that is leaving a transparency behind. Um, we completely got rid of the white, completely got rid of the black. This transparency is represented by this checkerboard pattern. We don't want that, so we're going to get rid of that. Um, we're going to press Control Z or Control Z for the American audience, and it's going to get rid of the erasing I did, and press it again, and it gets rid of the line I did. Now, so Control Z, Control Z is undo, is what it's, the function is. So what we're going to do is we're going to give ourselves add a new layer. And now if we draw on that new layer, let's say here with our pencil, and if we erased it, then we get just the white left in the background, which is what we wanted to do in the first place. So let's look at our pencil drawing. We use the pencil here. And what the pencil does is it draws single pixel width um, lines. So you can see here these are single pixel width. Hopefully you can see that with YouTube. Um, I'm going to zoom in even a little bit more here. Um, so what you want to use this for especially I would say is for kind of precision pixel work and sprite work that kind of thing there is maybe what you want to use it for. Um, if you're getting real precise if you're coming in here and you want to know exactly where you're putting your pixels you can use this here your grid toggling mode and you can figure out exactly where you want to put your pixels. So you can put them in precise squares and do it like that. So let's zoom out now with this button right here, your minus magnifying glass, and get rid of that. Now for doing precision work as well, you might also want to use your ruler here. And this tells you exactly where you are on your canvas at any point. So your cursor on your canvas, you'll notice there's these lines here that are moving along on both sides telling me exactly where my cursor is. That may be something you want to use at some point as well. Let's move on however now to the paintbrush. Now the paintbrush is nice because you get a smoother line. It's not jagged and pixel perfect like the pencil is, but more than anything you also have the option to change the size of that. So let, we started with a 19, now we're using a 7 width brush. Uh, we can even up it to something like a 30. Um, besides using this, you can use these buttons as well to change it, but you can also use your square bracket keys, which can be very useful for doing something like this. I'm going to hold down my uh, left square bracket key and drag over here as I'm drawing, and we'll notice that my cursor, my paintbrush gets smaller and smaller. Likewise, I can hold the right uh, square bracket key, drag this way, and I can get larger and larger. Um, that can be a very desirable effect depending on what you're trying to do. Um, let's say we drew in a circle like this that we wanted to have getting smaller and smaller as we went that way. Some people may want to do this for various kinds of effects in the drawings that they're making. Um, so let's just make this into a little face here because he's happy. And um, so let's say, for example, we wanted to color this little face here. And so how are we going to do that? So let's pick a color to color him with. I'm going to say we're going to pick green for now. So let's color that face green. Now, it's hard to get in here and color exactly around 
the lines that I want because I'm going to maybe color over my black. That's no good at all. We don't want to do that and we don't have to do that with paint.net which is one of the great things about it. What we can do is use a new layer. So let's add new layer here just like that. So we see layer 3 here and we see those checkerboard patterns again to indicate that it's starting off completely transparent. But what we're going to do is slide that layer down using this uh, air down arrow here, move layer down and we're going to move it underneath this layer here. So think of, I don't know, plastic sheets that are completely transparent that we're using and that's kind of what we compare our layers to if you like. So what we can do now is we use this green and we're going to color right on this guy and it's not coloring through, you'll notice, the black portions. Even if I'm dragging my cursor over the black the green is not replacing the black as it was doing a while ago. So now that guy is colored in, we have a little dude there, let's say he's a Martian even, and we can go back to our layer up here. Um, he's got little antennae, let's say, and those are some of the basics of drawing with paint.net. There's a bunch of other options that I'll cover a little bit more, um, some of the basic ones anyway, in another tutorial, but I think this is something that you can get started on and making a lot of cool stuff with. Um, yeah, so start doing that, have fun with it, paint.net, it's free. So check it out. Thanks for watching this.